Welcome back. This next video here is about uh, how to conduct a youth matrix evaluation for our teens, so our middle schoolers and high schoolers. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to go search for our client. And here we're going to pull up our example of Boberson. We're going to go in his folder and then we're going to scroll down so we see that youth matrix teen you'll notice there's an elementary version as well just make sure you select the correct one for the child you're doing this for we're going to create new and then we're going to select the site and then here are all the different domains that we're looking at um, and then this is uh, where it tallies out the, the total youth matrix score um, it should be noted that for these different domains that are on here um, nearly all of which have actually been analyzed uh, through statistical software and determining um, if it has some um, level of prediction for having each of these two through nine and having some level of influence on academic performance. Um, and so fortunately we do have uh, some evidence of st statistical significance in which um, most of these domains are actually indicating some level of influence or um, ability to predict um, how well a child's going to be doing academic performance. And in the broader scheme of things, um, if we start to see children struggling in certain of the certain domains here, uh, we should be targeting services um, to help address those needs um, because we do know that they'll have some influence on their actual academic performance. All right, so for this first category here, um, ultimately what we're doing is a GPA calculator. And so what happens is that we pull up the, the, the child's report card. Um, typically, we access that information from PowerSchool, but it might be in a physical report card. Um, either way, you're going to count up how many A's, A minuses, B pluses, B's, B minuses, et cetera, et cetera. So here I have a child's um, report card queued up. And um, so if you're conducting this at the end of the semester, uh, sometimes there's an actual uh, semester category. If there isn't, you're just going to be looking at the most recent uh, quarter here. And uh, you can always consult your um, over here for some additional uh, details on, on where to consult that information. Um, so anyways, here we'll look at, um, for this particular child, the first well, the second quarter just started, so we'll look at the first quarter for the purpose of this exercise. And so here I'm going to add up, okay, we have 1A, I'll put that there, 1, we have an B, we have 1B, we have a B minus, It's like we have one B plus, and let me go back to the A's because there was more of them. So we have one, two, we have two A's and one A minus. So we'll fix that. One A minus there, and let it do its thing, do its all its calculating, and then we go down here. Um, we do know that there was a total number of six grades uh, or six classes that are grades. Um, and so the the child's GPA for that quarter is actually a 3.5. Um, what we do then is go to our academic performance score converter here. We look for 3.5, which falls right in this spot. We mark that in there, and it gives us our youth matrix score. Um, if for some reason the data did not exist or um, we don't have the information, um, there should be an explanation in here. And then any notes on their actual academic performance. So if we look back in here, um, and, you know, if we looked at, for example, the second quarter, we'd see that there was um, um, some issues going on with life science. So then maybe we had to know um, and if we actually go on even deeper, click on the actual grade here, what we can see is what's going on. And here it looks like, um, okay, it looks like all the assignments are in, um, just maybe struggled on the first handful of uh, assignments, seems to start to be getting the rhythm um, as they've gotten 10 out of 10 for the last um, um, few assignments. Uh, all right, so moving on to the homework completion section. 
And so what we're going to be doing is going back to um, the grades here. And so what we need to do is go in each of these different classes and look for anything that says HW and count them up. So in this class, for example, uh, there's one homework assignment and that child turned it in. So here in first hour, they completed one and there was one available. Now moving on to, to the next class, so let's back up. All right, second hour, let's open it up. All right, I see homework there. Okay, she turned that in. There's another homework assignment that was also turned in. That was turned in, turned in, turned in. All right, looks like all the homework assignments got turned in, so we just got to count them all up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 13. All right, so there was 13 assignments in that class and 13 um, that were completed and 13 that were available. Um, I'm not going to do the rest of these right now, but um, we just continue that process for each hour. Um, and then here at the bottom, it tells us um, the, the average of uh, assignments completed versus how many were available. Um, of the ones we looked at, she had turned in um, all of her assignments, homework assignments. And so we're going to mark one over here. And it gives us our youth matrix score. Uh, same deal, inputting that missing information there. All right, so now on to school attendance. What we do here, go back to the report card. Well, this one looks pretty easy, uh, considering there is she didn't miss a, a day of school uh, for that first, uh, first, well, a little over first quarter so far. Um, and so here, what we would do is put a zero, and then count up how many classes she had. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then seven class hours. Um, not surprisingly, the average number of absences well was zero. And so then we put that answer right there and it converts into our youth maker score, which is a five. Um, part of the reason that we separate for um, total absences per class hour um, is because it is sometimes common um, where a student might be missing first hour um, quite often and then might be there the rest of the day and so instead of counting um, just the first hour absences, so like let's say they had, um, they missed first hour 10 times but then never missed a day of school for the rest of the day, um, we would want to make sure that we capture a much more accurate representation of, of how often they were absent from school. Uh, so in that example, we would basically say 10 absences um, and then a um, total of seven class hours, which being seven, and so the average would still just be a little over one um, total absence uh, for that that marking period or quarter or what. Yeah. So then moving on for uh, behavior at the middle school level, not at the high school level, at the middle school level, they provide citizenship scores. And so these are these little numbers right underneath each of the, the classes here. Um, there's not really an explanation of where this number comes from I don't think anywhere in the report card and so you just kinda have to be in the know uh, to know that this number actually represents the child's uh, citizenship score it uh, basically the lower the number here it means that their behavior um, in the classroom is um, better and then it goes up to five so then here what we're gonna do is add up all the different citizenship scores so we see one two three four five, six, twos, and then there was one, one, and then zero and the rest. So then here it gives us our average uh, citizenship score being a 1.86. All right, 1.86, let's see here, right there. And then it gives us our youth matrix score being a four. Again, if you're doing a high school student's um, youth matrix, you're not gonna have that information. And so you'll just put in here as like uh, data does not exist. Um, however, let's say if you saw that the child was suspended 
uh, the child was suspended on Uh, we still want to capture that information, so include that in the uh, the notes notes section there. All right. So after school program involvement, uh, same as in the uh, setup for the elementary program, basically we're just counting. Um, we're we're looking for how many total days that they attended for academics specifically, and so we would just um, reference the attendance sheet at at the site that you're working, and then put the amount of um, academic days attended we'll say it was 16 during that period of time that's being analyzed we know that 16 is more than this 12 here so we're just going to click that gives us our youth matrix score and then we move on to the next and then this next section here is um, interviews and actually every following section here is interview portion so it is done with the child and so it's pretty straightforward where you just ask the questions and then you mark down the response from the child um, just for the sake of brevity I am going to just click quickly and here we see a total of two points click on two points it gives us our youth matrix score all right moving on role of education ideally you're putting their answer in these locations all right so here are total points for youth uh, role of education we have 19 and total points to, uh, received is a one Mark the one. There we go. We have our youth matrix score. Um, really, there shouldn't be any instances of data not existing for these interview ones. Um, it's more of just being able to uh, find the time to conduct the interview. Um, all right. So then here for school social inclusion, again, asking these questions and marking down their responses. Oh, actually, I'm going to click that one. So here's a total of five points. And so we're going to mark the five point mark spot. And there's our youth matrix score. And then here's the perceived parental support. All right, and this is the name of the parent um, or legal guardian. And if there's more than one parent or legal guardian, make sure you list them all. And then we'll just say that there's um, Bob Boberson um, has a father, Bobby Boberson Sr. And he's the father, so we're going to indicate that, and that's the only parent in the household. And then again, we're going to just answer um, each of these questions um, based on the responses from the child. There we go. Our total points for the for the section, and then we're going to mark it on our um, Likert scale there, and it gives us our youth matrix score. And this last one is not um, a part of the youth matrix. It is actually tied to specific funding, but it is a interview style question. Um, and so we want to capture this when we're conducting the youth matrix. Um, basically ask, ask that question and um, put the answer yes or no. And then um, who the child had identified in response to that. And then um, who, the relationship of that person um, to, the, to the child. And let's say they identified their father, Bobby Boberson Sr. And then we save the record. And here we'll see our total youth matrix score for this individual. Um, should also be noted that um, you don't actually have to complete all of the different sections at once. Um, you can actually do the each section as you have the information. Um, so keep that in mind when completing the youth matrix for both the elementary and uh, middle school and high school uh, students. Other than that, uh, this concludes the um, training on how to conduct a teen version of the Youth Matrix Evaluation Tool.